Hey there, Denver Cyclones. Uh, we're going to really quickly rip through um, a topic that is sometimes difficult for kids to, to comprehend, but I'm going to try to make it pretty bite-sized for you. So um, before we talk about the photoelectric effect, let's make sure that we understand what the first probably half of this week has looked like. You've been looking at um, waves for the most part, specifically light. Um, I haven't made that um, super, super clear, but I want to make that really clear. We've been looking at things that act like waves, and so sound acts like waves. Water um, has wave properties, and light also has wave properties as well. However, here is an interesting little thing that light also has the ability to do. It has this little photoelectric effect that makes light sometimes not act like a wave. So what we have here is we have an experiment that, um, uh, I don't know if it was an experiment necessarily, but it was something that people noticed about light that didn't make a lot of sense. So we know that light, specifically visible light, comes in many different colors. And as a result um, of its colors, it's got different energies, it's got different wavelengths, and it has different frequencies. If you can remember way back when we looked at the electromagnetic spectrum, red light has very long wavelengths and a uh, very small frequencies and not as much energy as light that is more toward the violet side, so the blue side, Roy G. Biff. So this blue light has more energy, it has a higher frequency and a smaller wavelength. Now, when we shine light of different wavelengths um, on metal objects or other things that have um, uh, have electrons, which is most matter, we, we find that sometimes with specific metals and different frequencies of light, we can actually knock off, and that's probably the best way to describe it, knock off electrons that actually exist on the metal, which doesn't make a lot of sense because waves should not have the ability to take matter, which electrons are examples of matter, and actually cause them to displace. You know, it, uh, we certainly can cause matter to vibrate, but to take that matter and eject it or emit it is something that waves should not be able to do. And what, but what they found out is this photoelectric effect um, occurs where high um, higher energy waves of light, like green light and violet or blue light, have the ability to cause electrons to emit from the metal when they get exposed to this light. So here's another uh, basically picture of this same situation where we have some sort of a, um, I don't know, it looks like this is potassium, and it, this has red light, which here is the wavelength, it's 700 nanometers, and it does not have the ability to knock off any electrons. But then this green light, which a, with a smaller wavelength and a higher frequency, more energy, it has the ability to actually cause electrons to move. Here is the velocity of an electron. That's pretty fast, by the way. And then we take this blue or violet light, which is even fat, you know, even, even smaller of a wavelength and even higher frequency, more energy, it hits the electron and causes the electron to move even faster. Again, this is all very interesting because light should not have the ability to do this. But the photoelectric effect is absolutely real. So it begs us the question, what's correct? Is light a wave? Is light a particle? Or is light both?